uh, with uh, Professor Kajita, who will speak about atmospheric neutrinos. The anomaly becomes the discovery. Please. Well, thank you. Well, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me. Well, okay, it's, it's really a um, pleasure and honor to speak in this meeting. So, well, the title is shown here, Atmospheric Neutrinos, The Anomaly Becomes the Discovery. And, well, yesterday, um, we had a lot of discussions about the uh, atmospheric neutrino anomaly. So, therefore, today I'm going to talk about the uh, history after the anomaly. <coughs> so, this is the outline. Um, well, I have an introduction that is actually, uh, um, I, 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 well, actually, I'm going to repeat what was discussed yesterday briefly. Then, I'm going to talk about the Super Kamiokande experiment. I move on to the discovery of neutrino oscillations, further confirmation of new mu to new tau oscillations. And well, here in this talk, I essentially concentrate on the new mu to new tau oscillation studies and related studies. Well, uh, uh, first of all, um, I would like to remind you about the key features of the atmospheric neutrino beam. Here, I, I show the flux ratios. Um, the, this one is the new mu over new E ratio, and this is new mu over new mu bar, and this is new E over new E bar. And you, you can realize, ah, by the way, here in, in these curves, um, four flux calculations are shown, and you can realize that by comparing these four lines that the ratios have been predicted very accurately. <coughs> um, also, I'd like to remind you, uh, by the way, this is the zin sangu distribution, calculated zin sangu distribution for three different energy ranges, uh, 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 GeV, 0 0.9 to 1.5 GeV, and 3 to 5 GeV. And you realize that the up-down ratio is very close to one and accurately calculated above a few GB. So these features have been very useful to the discovery of neutrino oscillations and to, for the studies of uh, neutrino oscillations. <coughs> now, well, yesterday uh, we had a lot of discussions on the mu over E ratio measurement. And this is the summary of the measurement by Kamio Kande and IMB. Both experiments observed the deficit of muon neutrinos relative to electron neutrinos. <coughs> now, actually, uh, I want to say one more uh, before Super Kamiokande. Well, in Kamiokande, um, after we published uh, the muon neutrino deficit in 1988, uh, we really wanted to get some hint on the um, physics behind the muon neutrino deficit. And of course, from the beginning, um, one possibility was neutrino oscillations. But we, we wanted to really uh, say stronger hint for the neutrino oscillations. And if we consider the oscillation probability, that then we realize it's very easily that for, up, uh, for downgoing neutrinos, depending on the neutrino oscillation parameter, there might be essentially no um, oscillation effect. But for the upward going neutrinos, that could be uh, substantial oscillation effect. So in Kamiokande, uh, we, um, after the initial publication, we began the studies of Zin Sangu distribution using the so-called much GV neutrinos, that is um, fully contained events with visible energy larger than 1.3 GeV plus partially contained events. 
And the, well, unfortunately, Kamiokande was small. And therefore, the number of events we were able to select in Kamiokande was limited. And finally, in 1994, we published a paper showing the Zinsang distribution. And this is the data. And well, of course, you realize that the number of events are small, therefore error bars are large. But there is some hint of up-down asymmetry. Unfortunately, uh, statistically, this was less than the three sigma effect. Therefore, we are unable to conclude anything definite, although it, it looked like an interesting hint. So clearly, data suggested something interesting, but the statistics of the data are not large enough. Therefore, it, it was clear that at that point, we needed much larger detector. And that was the Super Kamiokande experiment. Well, OK. Um, of course, you, you, you know Super Kamiokande. Maybe I can skip this page. Um, so this is the history conference. Therefore, I, I want to mention about the initial idea of Super Kamiokande. Well, actually, the initial idea was proposed already in 1983. Uh, this year, Kamiokande began the operation. And well, Kamiokande began the operation in July 1983. Then, after several months of um, data, Professor Koshiba realized that maybe by improving the, um, improving the Kamiokande experiment, uh, Kamiokande could detect solar neutrinos. But he also realized that the event rate of solar neutrino detection in, in Kamiokande should be low, maybe say one per week or so. Therefore, the detailed study of so solar neutrinos cannot be made. Therefore, he proposed Super Kamiokande to study solar neutrinos in detail and also to search for proton decays. And of course, um, after the, uh, this idea, ah, by the way, uh, this is the uh, copy of the proceedings um, of the first presentation of the idea of Super Kamiokande by Professor Koshiba. And he presented in a workshop in KK in December 1983. And at that time, uh, this was the image of the uh, Super Kamiokande. By the way, uh, if you carefully read this paper, there's an initial here, and this says YT. That means Professor Tosca was asked to draw this image from Professor Koshiba. And also, I want to mention, uh, well, of course, you cannot read uh, this part. Um, but well, let me expand. This says fiducial volume. 22,000 tons. Actually, the Super Kamiokan, the real fiducial volume is 22.5 <laughs> kilotons. So, well, basically, Super Kamiokan sticked to the original idea. Anyway, Super Kamiokan was approved uh, by the Japanese government in 1991. And of course, for the approval, I think between 1983 and 1991, we had a very important result from Kamiokande. That was the discovery of um, supernova neutrinos in 1987 and the confirmation of solar neutrino deficit in 1989. And also, we had the uh, atmospheric neutrino deficit, but unfortunately, that deficit was not very well received. And therefore, for the uh, project uh, request for the project approval, atmospheric neutrino deficit was not so loudly mentioned. 
anyway, um, and the approval was, was 1991. Then, um, uh, next year, um, uh, we had the initial uh, discussion about the uh, super Kamiokan collaboration between Japan and the United States. And while well, this photo was taken in ICRR, our institute, in 1992, we discussed the responsibilities of the J Japan team and the US team. Uh, by the way, of course, the majority of the uh, US team was from the IMB experiment. <coughs> anyway, as you can imagine, the meeting went well. You can imagine from these beer bottles and, well, the Super Kamioka and the international collaboration began. <coughs> and, well, the, we, we really worked together and in, in particular in 1995, uh, we constructed the Super Kamioka and the ex experiment in underground and we started the experiment at zero o'clock on April 1st, 1996. And this photo shows the very happy moment. <laughs> Professor Totsuka, who was the initial spokesperson of this experiment, uh, clicked the start button of the run at zero o'clock. And of course, the run started, but unfortunately, the run failed in a few minutes. <laughs> but anyway, it's okay, we started. <laughs> Well, now, um, after the start of this experiment, um, well, basically, we had three um, analysis groups formed. One was on the analysis of solar neutrinos. Another one was on the uh, contained neutrino events. Uh, here, contained means partially contained and fully contained. And the, finally, the third one is the upward going mu analysis group. So, therefore, from the beginning of the experiment, um, we studied uh, fully contained events, partially contained events, and upward going muons. And all these events were tried to be used even in the early stage of the experiment to do the oscillation analysis. And Actually, uh, maybe I should mention one technical thing. Um, well, in Kamiokande, um, we analyzed the atom sec neutrinos. However, I have to actually mention that one of the limitations of the Kamiokande analysis was the necessity of the event scanning by physicists for all the data and Monte Carlo events. Due to no satisfactory ring identification software. For example, if you look at the event pattern, it's clear that there are two Cherenkov rings. But in, during the Kamiokande phase, we are unable to develop um, software to identify the number of rings and the ring location. So, therefore, we had to scan all these events. But in Super Kamiokande, um, well, there were very good people and who found that for this analysis, Hof transformation plus maximum likelihood could, could be the solution to find out the uh, rings automatically. And after this, we were really able to do the essentially fully automatic analysis. Now, I want to move on to the discovery of uh, atom sec neutrino oscillations. Well, um, so as I said, Super Kamiokande began the data taking on April 1996. And, well, of course, usually uh, it took some time to develop the analysis software and to to check anything, everything. So um, for us, it took almost two years to 
finished the uh, initial round of the analysis, and we presented our initial conclusive result at the uh, Neutrino Conference at Takayama, June 1998. Um, this is the copy of the uh, uh, program on June 1st. The session six was on atmospheric neutrinos. Three experiments presented, Sudan 2, Macro, and Super Kamiokande and Kamiokande. So um, I'd like to show you some key uh, data from Super Kamiokande. Well, <coughs> um, this, uh, the, this is the copy of the slide uh, of the Super Kamiokande presentation. Here, the Zinsangu distribution for sub GB um, electron neutrino events and muon neutrino events are shown. And it's clear that there is a deficit of muon neutrinos. But also, uh, at that stage, we realized that um, the Zinsangu dependence of the muon neutrino deficit have some Zinsangu dependence. Uh, well, the muon neutrino distribution has some Zinsangu dependence. Then we move on to the uh, multi GB neutrinos, and that is the uh, fully contained events above 1.3 GB plus um, partially contained events. And then, of course, uh, clearly there is a Jin Sangu dependent deficit of muon neutrinos. And the statistical significance was already 6.2 sigma. And furthermore, um, Super Kamiokande showed the uh, Jin Sangu distribution for upward going through muons, then compared with the no oscillation hypothesis and the hypothesis in including the oscillations, and clearly, no oscillation hypothesis was too flat. And finally, um, inspired by the IMB work, and Super Kamiokande presented the uh, up stop over up through ratio. And clearly, um, the up stop of the data showed the deficit, and that was completely uh, consistent with the oscillations. So that was the, that was the data presented at the uh, Neutrino Conference. And from this data, um, well, Super Kamiokande tried to estimate the uh, oscillation parameter region, and that was shown there. And <coughs> from that, uh, Super Kamiokande concluded that the uh, observed Zin Sangu dependent deficit and the other supporting data gave evidence for neutrino oscillations. Uh, by the way, this was the uh, conference version. And of course, soon after this conference, we published our data, and this is the published version. And well, for the publication, we only, at that time, we only used the uh, contained events. OK, that was the Super Kamiokande presentation. Um, in addition, um, there were Macro and Sudan 2 presentations. Um, well, Macro observed the uh, Zin Sangu dependence of the upward, go upward through going muons, and again, consistent with the Super Kamiokande, the observed Zin Sangu distribution um, had a small slope. And in order to explain that distribution, you needed the uh, neutrino oscillation. Uh, by the way, they also presented the uh, up stop, that means, um, upward going muons that stop inside the detector, and in down, that means partially contained events going down, and in up, that partially contained events upward going one, were also mentioned, and all these data were consistent with neutrino oscillations. And Sudan too reported the uh, mu over E ratio, and the published number soon after the conference was 0.64, and that was cons completely consistent with the uh, water Cherenkov number. As you may remember, in the old days, 
um, only water chilling of observed the deficit, but this result clearly confirmed the deficit was not the water effect. So three presentations at the uh, same conference were just consistent, and all of these data were completely consistent with the neutrino oscillations. So therefore, I believe uh, the neutrino oscillation were accepted at this conference. Now, um, after the conference, um, Macro and Sudan to continue the, their analysis, and they updated the, uh, well, Macro updated the result and the, the data shown there. In addition, Sudan to also looked at the <coughs> gene sangu dependence and found that the muon neutrino deficit has indeed the uh, gene sangu dependence. And finally, I want to mention about the uh, super Kamiokande oscillation analysis. Well, although we presented the uh, oscillation analysis based on each data sample already in 1998, but unfortunately, we are slow. Um, we only presented the combined um, oscillation analysis in 2005. Um, this is the copy of the uh, figure in this paper. Here, uh, we estimated the oscillation parameter, allowed oscillation parameter from each data sample. And we found that basically all data are just consistently suggesting the uh, common oscillation parameter region. And the combined oscillation result was shown there. Uh, by the way, if we, you look at the uh, horizontal axis, that is sine square two theta. Nowadays, people write the contra, uh, with the horizontal axis sine square theta, but at that time, still, the question was whether um, sine square two theta one is really a good fit, uh, even assuming the, the sine square two theta larger than one. Okay, now, um, in the remaining time, I want to talk about the further, okay, further confirmation of oscillations. Well, actually, I, 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 I copied the Super Kamiokande presentation at Neutrino Conference, and this is the last page, and at the bottom of the page, um, we wrote that the oscillation could be new mu to new tau or new, new mu to new s, sterile. So, this question remained, and, but we wanted to resolve. Um, and for this, um, we did um, special analysis. Well, compared with new mu to new tau and new mu to new sterile, there should be two different uh, issues. One is the propagation, and one is the interaction. Well, uh, due to the propagation difference, there should be a difference in oscillation, uh, oscillation probability. Also, due to the interaction, if the new, new oscillation is new mu to new tau, the neutral current should be disappearing. So we explicitly used these features um, to tell whether the oscillation is new mu to new tau or new mu to new sterile. And the paper was published in two th year 2000. And for this, we did a um, special analysis, high energy partially contained events, upward stopping, uh, no, upward through going muons, and maturing electron like events. And, well, then we compare the two, the, the, the oscillation predictions for two different assumptions, and we found that for each of these three distributions, new mu to new tau are uh, uh, favored, and as a conclusion, we had we said that pure new mu to new tau fit all of the, the data samples presented without any inconsistency. Another um, work we did was the uh, uh, following. Well, of course, we presented the uh, zin sangu dependence, but it, well, of course, it was nice to show the zin sangu dependent deficit, but we really wanted to know if this was really neutrino oscillations. 
So in order to confirm oscillations, we wanted to observe a dip that is the first oscillation minimum. And for this, um, we carried out a um, special um, LOV analysis. And this is the result um, that was presented in the 2004 paper. And the, well, so you can see that uh, some say effect of the uh, first oscillation minimum and the paper title was the evidence for an oscillatory signature in atmospheric neutrino oscillations. Finally, of course, new mute, well, of course, basically we concluded that the oscillation must be new mu to new tau, but we really wanted to observe evidence for the new tau appearance. And this is the Monte Carlo new tau event. So this suggested that it's not easy to, to observe new tau event by event basis in super Kamiokande. Therefore, we decided to do the statistical analysis knowing that new tau's are upward going only. So actually this analysis, we started around year 2000, but we, again, we were very slow. Initial publication was 2006, and that, well, this is the uh, result, and you see some, um, F, uh, well, some hint of the new tau appearance, and the paper title was consistent with tau neutrino appearance. Actually, that was only 2.4 sigma effect. Then, in 2013, we had updated, and the up significance was 3.8 sigma, and the title of the paper was evidence for the appearance of atmospheric new tau. And finally, th uh, this is the most updated one. Uh, this is the 4.6 sigma, uh, sigma tau appearance signal, and the paper title is measurement of the new tau cross-section. So I think, well, we have been working hard for the tau appearance signal detection, and this is also consistent with Opera and Ice Cube. Of, of course, in detail about the measurement of the cross-section, we have some tension, but anyway. Let me summarize. Okay, in, in 1998, neutrino oscillations were discovered by atomic neutrino experiments. And after the discovery, atomic neutrino experiments have been studying oscillations and contributed to sub substantially to establish the new tau, new mu to new tau oscillations generated by neutrino mass and mixing angles. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This question. One reason for not believing uh, the Kamiokande results on atmospheric neutrinos was that uh, the, the separation between electron and muons was, uh, as you said, was done by hand. There was no. But once you have used uh, an automatic method, uh, I suppose that you have checked uh, with uh, some scans also that the method was uh, correct. Well, OK. About the uh, uh, separation of muon and electrons in Kamiokande, um, well, okay, we had actually uh, several ways of the checks. Uh, first of all, uh, we, we have, of course, cosmic ray muon data sample. Therefore, we checked uh, how much muons are misidentified as electrons. Of course, we, our conclusion was better than 98%. In addition, we, we had the Monte Carlo neutrino events, again, 90, better than 98%. And finally, I didn't mention uh, in a beam test in KEK, uh, we explicitly checked the particle identification, and we concluded that the particle identification <laughs> is just as expected by Monte Carlo. Uh, uh, beam test with electrons? Uh, electrons and muons. I'm sorry I have to do this, but I think I was put in this position by the conference organizers. Um, in in uh, Takeda's 1989 PhD thesis, he has many details of the, the uh, anomaly work mm. in, in, um, in Kamioka. And he suggests that the MS algorithm was changed around that time, mm. that the MS algorithm, the, the classification of muon versus showering uh -huh. tracks, uh -huh. was uh -huh. changed at around that time. 
And prior to that, in earlier publications of uh, Kamioka, there was an excess of muons. The mu to E ratio measured using the MS algorithm was about 1.6 sigma high, whereas if you looked at the T2s, or the, what we call T2s, what you call muon decays, it was 2.2 uh, sigma lower, and I had noticed earlier that that was compatible with IMB. Yeah, if yeah, I yeah. recall, in the summer of 1986, I, I discussed this with you because it was still rather confusing that Kamioka was reporting a high mu to E ratio, and we were seeing a very low number of, of uh, muons as measured by mu decay. Uh, so did you change the MS algorithm to agree with the mu decay rate? Oh, yes, yes. Um, before 1990s, uh, well, before the fall of 1998, uh, no, 19. 86, sorry. Um, the uh, uh, separation of the muon and the electron was not so efficient. And the well, efficiency was only, say, 85% or so. And that was actually not well calibrated. So, well, of course, uh, before 1986, we never, never wanted to do any significant physics with the, with the particle identification at that time. Okay, and the second question is, is not, well, it's a historical one, I guess, but um, the, the 1988 Kamioka paper quotes IMB 1986. Yes. But Super K has never quoted that. You quote the 88 paper. Why not? I mean, we did it. We did it first. Why oh, not I, I'm it? sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> well, okay. Well, but, well, okay. Well, as I, actually, as, as I discussed, well, I, we also caught the uh, IMB particular identification papers that were explicit about the muon and electron content. We, uh, therefore, we, that way, we caught. Are there other questions, comments? Please, Sergei. It's not a serious comment. I mean, it's in 1991, after Super K was approved, Yuchiro Suzu I attended a talk by Yuchiro Suzuki, who said that Super K will be switched on on 1st of April 1996. And I was sitting and thinking, is this a joke? I mean, what the hell is this? 1st of April 1996. I just didn't know that the fiscal year in Japan begins on 1st of April. Yes, that's right. <laughs> but it was switched on on 1st of April, as you said, 1996. Yes. Yeah, Professor Tosca really sticked on that date. So the whole collaboration was forced to start on April 1st, zero o'clock. Okay, uh, Rupert Leitner, Prague. Uh, may I ask you about uh, the figure which confirms the oscillation with the dip? Uh, mm -hmm. at around uh, 500 kilometers per GV. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the reason that uh, this uh, red curve uh, after the dip is still going uh, a yeah. little bit up? Is it a matter effect or what is behind? No, no, no. This is, some, uh, this, dip, well, this is coming from some systematics. Actually, I forgot from what systematics mm -hmm. this is coming. Okay, okay. Thank you. Well, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs> uh, very nice. Sorry.